Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel, the Regal Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Julius in the chair. How are you, mate? You good? Yeah. Good, good. So what am I doing for you today, mate? Oh, I think mainly for summer, I want to kind of get rid of the back and sides kind of grown out. Okay. And I think a bit off the top, maybe just thinning and for the rest, yeah. Okay, no so what type of style are you, look, are you going for? Is it what you've got now? Yeah. You're still looking for that kind of off-center park yeah, and it's kind exactly. of look, yeah. Like not quite curtains, but a bit maybe down the, yeah, not in, not entirely like a middle part, but kind of down the, the side of it. But. Okay, well, so not, not exactly like, like that? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, here. Like, not exactly in the middle, but kind of down the side of it. I mean, that distance apart from the middle won't make too much of it. It's like only like a centimetre. Yeah. So it's, it's still going to be essentially yeah. a centre part. Okay, yeah. But are you looking to wear it quite flat on the top and quite round? Or are you looking to bring it back? Um, I, I would like to bring it back a little bit. I would suggest that, yeah. only because you've got such a good hairline. Mm -hmm. If you look at that as well. If you would mind just lowering your mask for me as well, Julius. Yeah, I mean, if, look how if you look how flat that is, mm -hmm. I don't think it does anything for your face. If I just turn to camera, if you watch this, if, I, if it's sitting flat now and say he's wearing a kind of like down on his face like that, right? You look at that. It closes a little bit, really, right? See, but he's got such a solid hairline. It's like with those peak as well. Mm -hmm. If I do this and just bring it off his face, do you see how much of a difference it makes as well? Just bright, brightens up the face, opens up the face a bit more as well. I think it's nice to have the option if it falls a little bit. Yeah. Maybe just like a couple of strands down here, there. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I mean, look, it, 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 that's just my personal preference, all right? But it, but it will be cut to an option that you can do that as well, all right? Um, but I think bringing it off your face a little bit would be quite nice. But you still want to keep it quite top heavy, though, yeah? Mm. Are you happy with all the length, or do you want me to just tidy it up a little bit? Uh, I can tidy it up a little bit. Okay, let's have a little look. Yeah, because it's quite disconnected, but I think we'd have to probably keep a slight disconnection in it right. on the back, on the sides, just to keep that length on the top. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd kind of lose a lot of this heaviness through here. So I think maybe if we... Have a slight um, trim around the bottom, especially at the back here. It's quite long towards the back. There's like a couple of strands. Yeah. I just turned to camera so everyone can see. If you have a little look at that there, it's quite long. You see like to a point here and then the next bit's like quite high up. So I think we probably use that as the guide. I always use the occipital bone at the back for where I balance the, the sort of, even if it's a disconnection or whatever, mm -hmm. just because that's the point of reference where it starts to round off and starts to protrude out. So I tend to always use that and kind of come up and off and kind of blend to that point. Um, but everything else can be disconnected as well. So what length on the back and sides are we thinking? Um, I, I think maybe two. A two, yeah. Yeah, sound, yeah, sounds good. You've got, got, you've got like on the back here as well, with the neckline, it's quite thick. Yeah. So I would probably suggest a taper on the very bottom as well, just to tape it right out. Yeah. It's always quite nice. Maybe not something too harsh, just something that looks quite neat. Grows out well as well then. So I think that'd be good. Absolutely. All right, buddy, let's get you started then, mate. Sounds good. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the exact point for this undercut, okay, for this disconnection as we call it, okay? Um, so I'm looking at just on, maybe just above the round of the head, just because that way it will fall more natural. I think the problem is when you do an undercut and you either go, like I'm sure you've seen in some of the previous videos, if you don't do it at the right point, it either doesn't fall right, it's not symmetrical, or it just doesn't look right. You know, there could be something that just looks a bit off and you don't really know what it is. If you're looking now, it looks like this is a previous haircut from, it, it, this isn't a DIY one, is it? It's done no. professionally, yeah, you can tell. So what we're gonna look at is where we want it to fall. So I'm thinking just above the round head, so just above the recession, just very, I mean, literally, you know, millimeters above, but the difference, do you see where the hair wants to grow down like that? And it separates very easily. That's what we're looking for, because we're gonna do a two, but I'm not gonna just shave it right up to the round head. I'm still gonna blend it in. I'm still gonna create a squareness in there that it gives a little bit of balance through the face shape. He's got a solid face shape. I mean, you've got the face shape that works for any haircut. You really have it. Just a, it's not too long, it's not too small, it's not too thin, it's just it's just perfect, right? And that's what we're this kind of haircut works well on you, okay? So it's a good choice that you've gone for. I know I'm not the biggest fan of disconnections and undercuts, and I'm sure I've voiced that, but you know, it's when you get the, the right one or the right person for it, that's when I, that's when it's a it's a fun, it's a joy to do. There we go. As you see, I've got I haven't got a clip in there at all, but it's not fighting, it's not fighting with me. Doesn't want to fall down doesn't want to force itself to a different direction or growth pattern. So that's what I'm trying to look for. That's what's good about sometimes you use section clips. You know, you can sometimes, if you're looking to alter the sort of pattern of what you're cutting it in, a section clip's good for that. But I think when you're working with something natural, and that's why I like working without section clips a lot of the time, it's just because it allows to see which way the hair is going to actually fall as well. So I know that, again, it's not just about the cut on the day, it's about when Julius comes to style it or whoever else comes to style it there isn't a little bit kicking out because you've sectioned it a little bit too low or whatever. So I tend to try and use the natural growth patterns and things for, for a lot of my work. There we go. Right, I'm just going to dry this off now as well because we're using the clippers. That's good enough. 
So I'm going to start on a two and a half, okay? Now, I'm going to start at the back and work it up to the occipital bone because I want to remain, uh, so I want to keep a lot of the hair through here. So I want to try and work the shape that even when he's wearing it back or if it falls into the middle or just off center like he asked, is that it still has got a nice head shape at the back. So going in, two and a half, up and up. Again, using that scoop of motion, doesn't leave a harsh line, but you can see where you need to blend to as well. Now the reason why I'm keeping it quite low, obviously, like we said, we want to keep some length on the top, but this allows me to build up the weight visually myself without having to kind of go too high and try and guess where it needs to come to. Now what we'll do on the sides here, we'll just go maybe just mid height. That gives me room to blend it in as well then. But also with that drop at the back, you'll notice that drop too. So closed guard, there you see, levers fully up to the top, lowers the blade closer to the edge of the, the clipper guard. I'm gonna go up and off to about here. Okay, so coming up and away. Lower this head down slightly as well. So up and away, like that, okay? Like that. There we go, I'm just doing it nice and slowly. You don't need to be too quick at all. It'll only do what the clipper does if you make it do it, so. Working it around, like so. So before I take the mask off and, and work around the side and stuff, I'm going to work on the taper. Okay, just it's more efficient doing it that way. Put my number one guard on, leave it down. I'm going to work up to about here. Okay, just around here where I can come up and off. Not gonna, it's not going to touch the back here. We still want that number two to be the majority of the length through the back and sides. So that's what Julia sees and everyone else sees. Just give ourselves a nice natural low taper. Number two, down to nothing. Doesn't take away from the haircut, just, just enhances it more than anything else. Now, in between closed and open, going to the half, okay, on the lever. I'm going to come off that bit now. I'm just working down. Ever so slightly, maybe half a centimetre or a centimetre below. Close lever now. A little bit lower down again. There we go. Open blade. When we say open blade, we mean lever back. And just down the very bottom now, just to about just a, a centimetre above the bottom hairline. Like so. And again, halfway in between closed and open and then fully closed so add the symmetry to it which just takes it down to zero i'm going to work around the ears now and on the side bend so my number two back on i'm just going to start on the side bend and around the bottom now i will be tapering around the ears with the, the trimmers in a minute so i'll use my number five comb as well which goes down to a two so that'll get rid of all them little longer hairs you know it's like when you've got a big guard it's very hard to get their hairs off now Julius' sideburns are quite dark compared to the rest of his hair, just because they're quite low as well going into his beard here. So I'm just going to use a one and a half just to taper the sideburns a bit. I'm just going to just flick it up into this bit here. See the way that bit's the same colour as the back and sides, but you see the little darker patches through there. So I'm going to make it look a bit more even, a bit cleaner as well. So same idea as the taper, just flicking up and off, like so. Just give it a nice shorter feeling. And then once we edge that up, it'll thicken it up nice and tight for them. Now we're going to do some clipper over comb to blend this in now. That's my guideline, just going to strengthen it up a little bit. A lot of elevation, again, the more elevation you get, the more lengthy you layer on top of each other. So that's what we're looking to do. Getting closer and closer down now. So I'm just resting it against the scalp. And we've got that nice blending point here. And just run that along to catch any of the little hairs the number two may have missed. There we go, like that. What we've done is kept the length through there, and we just blended it in 
but from the side we're still keeping that nice roundness at the back and that leanness into the neck. Then just going to work on the bottom, up and off, just to get any of them little longer hairs. Number two guard may have missed. They are quite wide, like I said, so you will lose a couple of hairs through there. I'm still having that slight elevation in there as well. And again, we are going just above the round of the head, so I still want to create that nice squareness, because even though essentially this is going to finish in a sort of rounded shape with the heaviness through the, through the disconnection, I still want when he pushes his hair back to have that squareness and that leanness. So it's almost two different looks you can create with this, a much more rounder finish if it falls just on, in the centre part down to his face, or if he pushes it back, it creates that quite nice leanness, which I think is the better of the two, but it doesn't really matter, it's, it's a personal preference. Look at the blend. There we go. I'm going to use that mirror now, you see that's creating a really nice leanness to the sides there. Okay. We're still going to have that weight sitting over it, but I think just have to keep that little bit of length in there. When it is pushed off his face, it's going to give him a really nice leanness into the jawline. All right, same again the other side. So moving on to the edging, the lining out, whichever you want to call it. Again, I'm not going to do something that's going to be really sort of drawn on on the sideburns and stuff. I just want to, again, this, this look is such an effortless look. I don't want it to be sort of like really sort of drawn on. So I'm just going to strengthen up the bits that need strengthening up, okay? Just to give it a bit more of a, a little bit of strength in there. And also the symmetry for both sides when you're looking straight on. I'm going to take the sideburn in a touch just because the way it curves in there. I'll use that as my guide and just take that down. Okay, like that. So you can use your comb if you want to. If you're starting off, put your comb where you want the line to be, straight down. You can line across your comb or work to your comb. If you're more comfortable being a bit more freehand with your clippers, you can just do it the way I am. And then the sideburns. Do you want to lift your sideburns up a little bit or are you happy with them being a bit lower down? What's that, sorry? Yeah, can we lift them? Yeah, of course you can, yeah. Now, would you, I can give you a suggestion where I think will work. Mm. I think maybe about there would be good. Okay. Can you see that? Just because if it's too low, yeah. it can add a little bit of darkness to the side. We don't, we don't really need too much sideburn length on this hair because so it could take something away from the look itself. Yeah. You know? So I'd have something that just kind of blends in with everything else. So I would say about, still keeping the sideburn, but maybe about there. Is that all right? Mm. Cool. Put a line in there. And then I'm going to bend up to it there. There we go. So I can use my number five comb to taper in and clean up what the, what the clip has left earlier. Right under. There we go, like that. See all the hair coming off there. Strengthen this up, you can keep it nice and wide, less stubble, more natural looking, will suit him more, as we're following his natural hairline. If I was to go like this and cut in like that, all that stubble will grow back quite quickly. Just keeping it as wide as possible, it still looks neat, it still looks tidy, you're just not going to have all that stubble. Straight line like that. And just tape it down the bottom. Right, move on to the top now. I'm going to bring this all the way back. 
Now I'm going to start at the back, okay, at the crown. I'm going to connect the crown in first. I'm going to work long ways like that, okay? So center part. Now, best way to get the center part, lean on back onto your chest, go from the nose, go straight down like that. Separate it, either side, and then lift them up. And there's a nice center part there for them. Now, they're taking the first section, I'm going to work it all the way down to the back, like so. A T section, okay? And pick it up. Head down that for me as well. I'm just going to pull this out, but as you can see, I'm dropping it down to match this point here. Okay, I'm not elevating it and bringing it straight out because if you look how much length I'd lose then, I lose an awful lot of length. I'd still have a guide, but I want to keep length through this back bit here and just match it up down the bottom. This is just a little point we were talking about earlier on when he sat down. I'm just going to point cut in quite deep. Like that. There we go. So we'll break that up in a little bit, but what we've done, we've kept that length at the back, kept all this length through here, but we've got that disconnection. So if I lift this up, there's your disconnection there. But as it falls down, it looks like it connects at the bottom. Take one section here, like so. Bring this down and match up to the same point. And just keeping it nice and straight, like so. Take another section to match that side. What we're essentially doing is leaving that to be undercut over that side. So as it brings back, as it brings it back, it's got a nice sort of blending point at the back here, as you can see. But as you pull it on that centre part, it will hang over that side. Same again. There we go, drop it down. Blend that through the back. Nice wider section now as we get to the apex. The apex is here. I guarantee by the time we get to the fringe, there'll be nothing to take off, okay? So, to Julius, he's still got the length that he wants. But for us, we know we're connecting everything in and we're balancing everything. Like that. Keep my fingers nice and straight. I think a lot of guys, especially with more length in it, having options to start differently for when you're in work and out of work or whatever, or even just when you're in work going out and you want to make it a bit messy or a bit different. It's nice to have that option. Even myself now with this short hair, I still have an option to wear it down as well. So, you know, it's quite nice. Some days you don't want to have the same look. Some days you're wearing something different. I have to put a suit on when going to a wedding. You know, you can't always expect to get a haircut a week after or two weeks after when you, maybe something comes up like an interview or something. There's length coming off, okay? But not much. Now the last section is at the front. So I've pulled this back if you look around here, Liam. As you see, nothing's been cut on this yet. And I pull it back, like I said earlier on, nothing is gonna come off. So he's had a trim. For what Julius sees, he's had a trim. All right, but what we see as a professional, balance, blend, etc., etc. we've done what we wanna do, along with keeping Julius happy as well. So if I just pick it up just to show you guys, Nothing is coming off. See, nothing needs to come off. Okay? But essentially what we've done as well, by doing this section, we take it just that centre part, just off centre that he likes. What we've done is we've still kept in, by cutting it into that, we've kept in the kind of curtains effect. Okay? Now I'm going to match it up and level it off. But essentially that's what we've done by cutting it into that shape. Okay? So that's what we've left coming down. Now I'm just going to perfect it up. I'm just going to basically work it through the side and make sure that it's even. So just going back to that centre part again. I'm just going to pull everything down and make sure that it's sitting around the hairline at the front. Like so. Just put that behind his ear. Do the same section around. And match it up. Make sure it matches in the middle. Okay. And then use this as your guide when you pull it to the side. So again, a little trim, there we go. There we go. And this, there's a guide there. There we go, nice and straight. Cut that nice and blunt for now. Moving it up. Bring that back. 
There we go. Much either side. There we go. Point, point. So if you can connect it in. Right. So that's a balanced centre part. Now, I'm going to check the middle through here. It's nice and even. Picking it straight up. Nice little point. This is exactly what I'm after. So we'll always keep the same shape. We can just take some length off. Let's just take a trim off. A little bit. Point cut into that. So that's a good thing about this kind of style is that there will always still be that shape. You can still trim the top as well. Because we haven't cut it into a point through the back. I'm going to use the raise now to add the texture in. So the primary shape is done. Okay. The cut is essentially done. So as you can see, if he brings it back this way, it looks blended in. Look through the back, it all sits nice through the back. But then if he just lets it fall, it's still very undercut in 90s like when you walked in. But I just want to add some texture in this, okay? The razor into the back, okay? You can see just off center. Wait, this razor in, okay? This is going to add the texture that I'm looking for, the movement that I want to create. Work it over to one side, use your comb, and just slide over very, very lightly. Just add a bit of movement through that back. Just off center. Let's get a bit of height in there now. Let's just cut it a little bit of height. So off from halfway. And just slide through like that, okay? Very lightly, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking away length, okay? Because I still want this, this is very heavily cut into a center part, but I want to give them the options for it to move about a little bit as well. So by cutting it off center and putting that texture in off center, when he wears it away from his sort of center part, it'll still have a little bit of shape in there as well. That front two, halfway up, like so. Now, take a section from just over the round of the head. And let's slide into this as well to break it up a little bit. The shape is still there, remember? Just kind of breaking that up a little bit for him. Nice. Same again this side now, so take so it just off center. Just gliding it over the top. There we go, just like that little bit of movement when it falls like that, see? Stay away from the front, don't don't cut into the fringe bit. That is all you need to do for now. So I'm going to dry a little bit of salt spray in this. So as the hair is like what we say towel dried, okay, a bit damp, just spray the salt spray. I'm going to lift it up and spray it into the roots, okay, because I want to get the height. Just want a little bit of body in there, just because there's a lot of length still. I don't want it to sit too flat for them, so hopefully just bring out that texture we've added with the razor. Again, the products look mostly, for the way I cut it, just enhance what I've done. Obviously some styles that will create what we're looking for. I start at the back. Brush it all over to one side. Just use that brush and just work it over like so. Just to really enhance the shape we've put in. So it can sit nice and smooth, but it can also sit messy as well. Okay? Up and down. So you see, it's a nice bit of movement over the back, not sitting too bulky. finish off just by point cutting into this weight through here. So what we did before when we kept everything nice and straight, what well, does it create a bit of a line? Pick it straight up like so and just point cut right into it. What I'll do is it lies flat, it'll take away that line. Straight in. Okay. 
cool. That's the finished look you get, just with a bit of salt spray. And as you can see, it's very full and quite heavy through the front and through the middle, like that. So you can wear it just off centre like that if you want to. I would suggest doing something like that so you still have that slight element of the parting in. So that's fallen just back, just for the shape of the face as well, just for it to really bring out the face shape. But it can fall, like when he came in, it can fall maybe if he wants to wear it just off again, it could fall quite heavy as well, down to the sides, whatever you prefer, all right? Okay, how's that look for you, mate? Happy, yeah? Amazing, yeah. Thank you very much, man. That's it done, mate? Happy? Cheers. Looks cool, man, looks really nice. Because you're still playing on that centre part element. I mean, you could always just bring it back if you want to, but I just thought for the purpose yeah. of, of what you've asked for, you can still have it, obviously, centre part or just off centre, coming back, but you can also have it very 90s if you want as well. But I just think it looks quite nice for that as well, to be fair. Happy, yeah? yeah. Thanks, man.